would have been another class that deals with your destiny. Uh, so what I really want to do is, we were in the class just a minute ago, and I think uh, I took some real great notes, and then I just want to minister to you out of the word and by the spirit of God pertaining to some things that I think most of us are here because most of you look like scholars, you look like you study and know the word of God, you got a relationship. Do I got relationship people in here? Amen. I think the greatest thing that I've noticed about Jesus is he was always prepared with the word because it was a life and it was a lifestyle. And the reason why his life had a lifestyle because not only do you know it, others need to see it. I think destiny is something not only do you need to know it, but others also need to see it. Because until it appears, there is no real uh, acknowledgement of your arrival. So God always puts destiny in you. Then he sets, he sets a course for it and places it on the outside of you. But your destiny, just like success, is going to be predicated on your choices. And your choices determine how you manage the process. If you don't choose to be equipped, you don't choose to prepare yourself appropriately, you may find yourself failing along the line. We were listening to uh, a minister a little while ago talking about destiny stoppers. One of the greatest destiny stoppers there is, is bad choices. Bad choices are the greatest derailers of what God has pre-set up and preordained for your life. And I think the greatest thing to understand different from the world and from the kingdom of God when it comes to the destiny that God has set up for you is that God already had thought the plan out for you before he ever put you in the plan. Now, I hope you grab that because that's probably one of the greatest things I'm going to say about the spirit of God before I say anything else. God already prepared to put you in the plan. He planned for you. So you have confidence when you know that he has begun a good work, shall perform it Amen. in you. So it's okay to not have confidence in you, as in your natural man, your natural talents, your natural skills. Watch this. And then the natural beneficial things that you have uh, gathered throughout your walk without God. Because there are talents and skill sets and successes that we've gathered through our life. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, we'll lean to them. And so what happens is, it'll throw you off course with your destiny that God set up for you, and it'll put you on the road of another destiny that looks the same. And there are a lot of people walking counterfeit destinies mm. or on counterfeit journeys, meaning they're on something that seems right, but it ain't right because God has not planned it for them. You only have one destiny in life. You do not have multiple destinies. Real destiny is the plan that God has purposed for you to perform and the place that he set up in that plan. So the first thing you've got to do is uh, one of the things we learned from Paul is he said you've got to be willing to take everything you count as gain and see it as nothing. Now there's a reason why you got to take everything you count personally as gain that you've obtained from this world to see it as dung or nothing because you may lean to it. You may lean on it. Unfortunately, you're not built without God to hold the pressures of the challenge and opposition that you're going to face of this world or the spirit of this world or of Satan who's in this world to stop you from getting there. Every one of us that arrive to our place that God has set up for us encourages somebody else that they can get to that place. Now, I will tell you on this journey of destiny, there are destiny stops to encourage you. God, dog, I could have shouted right there. Yeah, God always has rest stop on us. Yes. And so you got to understand, ain't this good for not having something you didn't put down, but to trust God because you're prepared in his presence daily, and you're on the right course knowing not only will he guide your steps, he'll direct your words if you don't lean to your own understanding, or what I said in the beginning, trust what you think you know, or trust your natural ability. One of the greatest things that you're going to find is your first opposition beyond Satan when it comes to destiny. And again, it's a choice. God is not going to make you do it. God is not going to take you from it. That's why God loves offerings, because offerings is when you give him whatever he wills. He doesn't have to make you do it. That's forsaking yourself. See, you're never going to cast beside the weight of trusting and leaning to your own understanding if you're not willing, first of all, to cast you out. You've got to forsake yourself. 
you got to forsake your own ways. You got to forsake everything you used to that made you comfortable or made you think you were successful. And that's not to make you a failure, but that's to empty you out so that you can be successful when it comes to the destiny that God has for you. Because God not He will not pull new wine into old wine skin. Well, I mean, no, we're born again. We're yeah. new creatures. And therefore, you're made with an incorruptible spirit. So God's not going to pour this incorruptible spirit in this born-again being if that being is still there. He's not going to entangle himself with darkness. No, when light comes in, darkness goes out. So this is why I mean there are two destinies. There's a, par a, a parallel of a false destiny. It's when it seems right. When you're on a road that you're taking, even in the body of Christ, Seemingly, you're taking the word of God and putting yourself on a course based on what you desire because you never got rid of you in the beginning. There are people years in living out their own desires in God's name. They're ventriloquists. They throw the word of God up in their mind and say that's God and then they put it back in their spirit. Unfortunately, that's cannibalism because you're eating yourself. <laughs> and you weren't meant to eat for yourself. You were meant to eat from the daily bread and to eat of Jesus or partake of the bread of life. Now I'm teaching this better than I've ever taught it. And, and, and here's something that I understand. Because you were destined to hear it, God is destined to give it to me. So I don't even have to come in here and try to put something together for somebody God already planned for. I just need to be prepared for it with him in my time of presence and private time. That's why a relationship is important. So how do I forsake myself? You must get a relationship with God where you will gain the knowledge of God. You cannot gain the knowledge of God without a relationship with God. That's why the book of Joshua says, I think it's 1 and 8, that when you observe to do all, that's written, I need you to get my time. <laughs> all this, because see, when it gets real good, you know you're already ready to go over because you get in the overflow. <laughs> and you're already in overflow when you start when you're on the course with God. You got more than enough when you're on the course with God. But you personally may not feel like it. And so it's imperative for you to understand in this relationship with God, the book of Joshua said, you got to observe and do all that's written. So now if I'm going to do all that's written, i got to read all that's wrote. Yes. Yes, See, there's a lot of yes, people that yes, read some of what's wrote and do some of what's written wow. and think God's going to give them everything. But the book of Galatians says God is not going to be mocked. So now destiny, watch this, does have conditions. God's love is unconditional, but his promises are conditional. And if you don't meet the conditions of the promises, you will never finish the process because the promise is for the process. The process you'll go through. The process is what you're going to deal with. The process is how you come up. And you've got to know in the process, the way to make it through is you've got to see the promise. So don't ever get caught up in looking at the process of how you're going to get there. Look at the promise. And the Bible said it was the promise. It was what God set before Jesus that he made it through all of the process of getting us salvation. So it's imperative if you're going to get to your destiny. The book of Joshua said you got to observe to do all. Now observe to do now, first of all, seek to see. And then when you see it, you got to study to know it. There are a lot of people that are not seeking to see the word of God, not, not the living word of God. They're seeking to see the written word, and they want something not alive so that they can move it. See, anything not alive is subject to whatever you do to it. But anything that's alive can move away from you. And see, when you're living, dealing with the living word, it'll keep you from failure. Because it's now unto him who's able to present you faultless. You know how he presents you faultless? He doesn't let you fail because the word is living. So if you take the word and try to use it wrong, it'll tell you it's not right. And it'll lead and guide you to all right. Good God, everybody, I'm feeling good. Listen. So that's why you have no fear. Once you forsake yourself, you spend time with the word of God, observe to do all that's written, which means not only read it, but get to know it. Yeah. Now you know him. You build confidence. When you're confident, it's hard for you to be condemned with fear. Fear is a condemner. It wants to stop you and confine you. People who are confined in the body of Christ are people who are not confident. People who are not confident, You've not observed to do all the work. You've not studied the living words. Because if you know how God moves, you're not concerned how the enemy is moving. Right. You're more watchful in watching your move 
Not necessarily where you're going according to where you see, but where you're going according to what God says. Is my steps lining up with what the word of God says? Because the scripture says in Joshua that if you observe to do this, not only will you make your way prosper, now the word prospers, because prosperity is a big word, and a lot of times we're scared of the word, but you should embrace it because it actually means do well. Prosperity, or to prosper, means do well. And if I got a bunch of substance naturally, I'm doing well. If I got a bunch of substance spiritually, I'm doing well. But I find out you're not, God is not subject to give you anything of natural substance if you don't have any spiritual substance because you're losing. See, whatever God sets you up for, he sets you up with. Right. And so you're set up with everything you need to get to and accomplish what God called you to. And so destiny has a calling. You're called to a set place of God. And that's your prosperous place. It's your promised place. It's the place where no matter what comes against you, a thousand will fall on your right and ten thousand I mean on your left and ten thousand on your right. It's a place that God will do not only the impossible, but God will do the unbelievable. It's a place where you are in an unfailing position. But all of this is by your choice. He sets before you in the beginning. Life, blessings, that means the power to increase. Death, curses. When you cut off, and now you come to the end of things. God never intended for you to come to the end of anything. Your life is destined to be so great that you're too great to die here. Come on. And so there is no fear of death. You know why the apostles that had a relationship that understood destiny, the disciples that got a relationship, that understood destiny, that acquainted themselves. Wait a minute one more time. Don't let it get too good on you. Uh, yeah. God acquainted themselves with the living word of God. When they found themselves in situation, they knew they weren't alone. How in the world would you be fearful if you know God before you? You're not even afraid of losing time or missing time when you know that you're with the Father of all time. It's almost like being with Ali, the greatest fighter of all time. If Ali is training you, he's beat everybody, why would I be afraid of any opponent? If anything, i got to watch it being overconfident. And so you got to be careful, come on, number two, that you don't become overconfident after God puts confidence in you. See, because then pride shows up. And that's exactly what happened to Satan. It's called the Lucifer syndrome. It's after God raised you up and built you up, and after a while you create your own build up. Mo, did you catch it? When God, he, he raised you up, builds you up, then you decide to do a build down. It's like God makes the house, puts everything in the house, and equips you with everything for the house to maintain the house. And you decide you got so much house that you can add a little more to the house. And see, when you add or take away from the word of God or the plan of God, it's no longer his plan. And unfortunately for all of us, when you take and add to God's plan, he scratches it. Not his plan, your plan. Soon as you put your hand on it, he takes his hand off because God is not confused. He's perfect in all his ways. He's established in all his ways, which means if you put your hand on it, then my hand can't be on it. The last thing I need you to do is cover me. Woo. Amen. And see, that's what the enemy doesn't want you to see. When you put your will and your way on what God is doing, you are almost moving him out of the way like you blot him out. And if you blot him out or hide him, Satan is going to take you out sooner than you can imagine. And so God doesn't want that for you. He wishes and desires that you prosper. His thoughts for you are good and not of evil. So he won't allow you to cover him up. So instead, he'll humbly get out of your way. Can you imagine God? This is how powerful God is. Not in all these great things we've seen in the world. That's just fantastic. But the greatest power is to be God and humble yourself to man. The greatest thing is to be God and to have such meekness that he spoke about and shown forth parallel on Moses. Having the power to split the sea open. Having the power to cause blood and frogs to rain out of the sky. Having the power to keep the water to go to one end of the earth and come back to the next and not fall off. Having all that power, but instead, instead of showing himself greatly in that, he shows himself in becoming a man. Knowing that because he was destined to be God and nothing else, he can become anything and not fail being who he is. Amen. Amen. 
Oh boy, I got what, five minutes? This, this is a good one. That's why you don't, listen, don't get discouraged in the process. Don't fall off being an impersonator and, la and not a participator. Right. Wherever you find yourself, be content. In godliness, knowing that if this is the course of God, I can never find this course because the greatest me is going to come out of this. Even when you become the servant of all, seemingly to be the lesser, he said you become the greater. The person that can humble himself and come beneath and operate in meekness is the greatest representation of God. And that's exactly what Christ did. He counted in not robbery to become one of us. Can you imagine being God and become a human and put yourself in the body and to deal with all the stuff that goes on in this flesh and to be confined to this little mind and to deal with the intellect of this medium soul and the imagination of our limited possibilities within ourselves and still not look to being God. The Bible says, he who has begun a good work shall perform it to the coming of Christ. And then it speaks of another scripture that says, or until we come into the full man or the fullness of God. Let me tell you what you're destined to be as I close. What I got, five minutes? Seven minutes. This probably going to just kind of shock you. Above all things that you receive along this destiny and these rest stops, you know what we're really destined to be? I'm going to tell you two things. I'm going to tell you the last one first, and then I'm going to come back and tell you the other one I could have told you before about purpose. What we're destined to be is to as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. We're destined to be like God in the earth. God wants you to start walking like God in the earth. Amen. And that's the greatest fear of man, but it's also our greatest place of pride. Who are you to tell God what you can't be if you didn't make it? Right. Who are you to tell God what you can't operate in if you didn't give you the ability? See, we call it humility, but it's false humility. You're really in pride. That's how dare you counsel God. He didn't need you when he made you to counsel him. He don't need you after you created. Right. And here's something that stopped many people from struggling. And it's not stopping you from the natural things in life that you line up with the spiritual things. But get this clearly. There's so many people tracing purpose. And the Spirit of God clearly says, son, they're not after purpose. They're confused with assignments. Your actual purpose is in Genesis. He made you in his likeness and not this image. There's nothing else man was purposed to be than to be like God. Then everything else is an assignment. And if you learn to be like God, everything else will be easy because that's where you yoke with his power. My time is up. Amen.